this is a topic that I had intended to include as a part of a larger video. However, I think it's interesting enough, and I think it's relevant enough, that it warranted a separate discussion, because this is going to be something that I'm going to be referring to quite a bit over the next couple videos. And the information itself is probably worth isolating, so that people who are interested in it specifically, but not some of the other things I have to say, can refer to it without listening to anything else. So what we're looking at today is a comparison between CSGO, or rather the entirety of the Counter-Strike series, compared to Battlefield 1 in terms of random bullet spread. And what I mean by random bullet spread is, is artificially imparted a deviation from the point of aim that is used usually to isolate weapons to specific ranges or make them play in a certain way, which is up to the intention of the developer. Of course, I never would have been able to present this information if not for the original research of the good Sloth Squadron, who is the noted creator of the CSGO Weapon Balance mod, who is kind enough to give me all the relevant information that I needed for this particular video. If you'd like to learn a bit more about CSGO's weapon stats, I will link his spreadsheet in the description, so you can look at all of the stats of CSGO's weapons. Now the reason this is important, and the reason I'm comparing Battlefield 1 to CSGO and the rest of the Counter-Strike series in particular, instead of just any other old arbitrary game, is because CS is commonly cited as the top tier, the absolute pinnacle of a competitive shooter. And this is for obvious reasons. It's extremely successful, and it probably does competitive pretty well. And now it's very often that I see in the Battlefield community that people cite CSGO is having no or little to no random bullet deviation, which is simply not the case. Now, I personally was not sure about the exact values, and that's why I set out to create this video, so that everyone can know what the relative values are and compare them from Battlefield 1 to CSGO. So my goal here is just to translate CSGO's spread to Battlefield values and see how the two relate. Now, as for how I'm doing this, I'm simply using the inaccuracy values from Sloth Squadron spreadsheets, which are in turn derived from CSGO's weapon scripts. This inaccuracy value is used to find the distance at which a weapon generates a 12-inch spread cone, which is to say the distance at which 100% of the shots fired from the gun will land within a 12-inch circle. And then I'll use that value, which he has conveniently provided for me for all the weapons, and use some simple trig to convert that value to degrees, which is what the battlefield uses. Now that will give us a comparison that is almost perfect, however there are a few considerations that we have to make when looking at CSGO. First, spread in CSGO is actually even over the radius rather than even over the area. Now when I say even over the radius, this actually means that the bullets tend to bias themselves toward the center of the circle. However, you will still get outliers that end up way to the edge of the circle. It's just less likely than it is in Battlefield 1. It's actually a bit less consistent than what we have in Battlefield 1, since while most of your shots will tend to land towards the center, there definitely will be those outliers 20% of the time that land way to the edge. Battlefield 1 pretty much distributes it evenly over the area of the circle. If you'd like to learn more about the difference between even over the radius and even over the area, I will leave a video I've done previously on this topic in the description. Another consideration to make is that crouching in CSGO usually applies around an 80% reduction in your base spread value to whatever weapon you're using. Now this is plus minus for each of the assault rifles, it's different depending on what you're using, and for weapons that are not assault rifles it's going to be a different matter. But we're focusing on assault rifles right now. If you want to look at the PDWs and the pistols and so on, again, go look at his spreadsheet which I'll link in the description. An 80% reduction is not substantial, as we'll see, and the only reason that I'm not going to talk about it when I go over the other values is because I don't want to spam a whole bunch of numbers at you. Anyway, all that aside, CSGO tends to have the most accurate weapons in the Counter-Strike series. The AK-47, with a first shot inaccuracy of 7, gets an accurate range of 21.74 while standing. This translates, in battlefield terms, to a spread value of 0.4 degrees. Its maximum spread value, which is to say the spread value that you reach after you've been spraying for a little bit, is 1.2 degrees. When you're crouched, your bin spread drops to around 0.3 degrees. For your reference, 
0.4 degrees is the standard base spread of the typical carbine in Battlefield 3, and is the base spread of most of the PDWs in Battlefield 4. In Battlefield 1, there are no weapons which have a value as high as 0.4 degrees. 1.2 degrees is actually extremely comparable to max spread values of Battlefield 4. 1.2 degrees to 1.5 degrees was typically what we saw for max spread values when, you, you know, when you've been holding down the trigger for a while and you've accumulated a bunch of spread. The M4A4, with its 12-inch spread circle occurring at 27 meters, has what we'd call in Battlefield a 0.32 degree minimum spread and a 1 degree max spread. When you're crouching, it drops down to 0.27 degrees. 0.3 degrees is slightly higher than Battlefield 1's MP18, and is pretty much equivalent to the standard carbine of Battlefield 4. The crouching value of 0.27 degrees is slightly better than the MP18 trenches base spread, but worse than the MP18 opticals base spread. It is less accurate than weapons such as the Model 8 35 Factory and the M1907. The M4A1S, which is slightly more accurate than the M4A4, has an accurate range of 28.2 meters, which yields 0.3 degrees of spread in battlefield terms, or 0.9 degrees if we go to our max spread value. This is almost identical to the base spread of the MP18 trench. When crouched, it drops to 0.26 degrees, which again is very similar to the Model 8 35 factory and the M1907. Now moving on to Counter-Strike Source, I wanted to look at the AK and the M4 from those games because I wanted to see how that accuracy compared to the accuracy in CSGO. Mind you, CSS is considered less competitive than CS 1.6 and CSGO. With a 12-inch spread circle occurring at a very close 15.6 meters, this gives us in battlefield terms an accuracy value of 0.56 degrees. Compared to Battlefield 3, Battlefield 3's PDW is shot at 0.5 degrees minimum from the hip, that is to say if you're using a laser sight. So in other words, the AK-47, when uncrouched, shot at less accuracy than Battlefield 3's PP-2000 did from the hip when you were using a laser sight. The M4A1S was a bit better at 0.37 degrees minimum, which is still more accurate than a CSGO's AK-47, and slightly more accurate than Battlefield 3's carbines were when they were unmodified. Other values that are similar to this are those of the PDWs of Battlefield 4, typically sitting at around 0.4 degrees of base spread. Now CS 1.6, which some purists still consider to be more competitive than CSGO, it was, it was weird to say the least. Firstly, it used a spread square rather than a spread circle for some unusual reason. That's, that's something I just can't figure. Now, Sloth Squadron has for me converted these values to CSGO values to find their accuracy, so that's what we're going to be using. They may be slightly off, but not meaningfully so. Secondly, CS 1.6 had a funny bug, which was called the Magic Bullet Bug, and this was a game-breaking bug that ended up becoming an integral part of playstyle, so it was never really patched. Now what this bug was is the first bullet that you fire after either reloading or switching weapons tended to be a whole lot more accurate than any of the other bullets. For some weapons, such as the MP5 and the UMP, it was actually perfectly accurate. You actually got 0.0, .0 degrees of base spread. For most of the other weapons, you simply got an accuracy boost. Now, aside from this magic bullet, the guns were pretty darn inaccurate. In fact, they were probably the least accurate of the series. And furthermore, the first bullet fired after a spray was complete was always accurate, regardless of how long you had waited for your spread to resettle. The AK-47 of CS 1.6 had a magic bullet value of 0.36 degrees, which is still less accurate than Battlefield 1's MP18. By default, it had a huge spread base of 0.62 degrees minimum and 2.2 degrees maximum. There are no weapons in the Battlefield series, starting from Battlefield 3, which have approached this level of inaccuracy. The M4A1, meanwhile, had a first shot spread value of 0.26, which is still less accurate than the MP18 Experimental, and the M4A1S had a 0.32 degree base spread value, which is still less accurate than the MP18 Trench. In addition to this spread, we have semi-random spray patterns. I say semi-random because there actually is some deviation when it comes to these patterns. They're not always identical. These patterns often have to be memorized since there is no visual indication 
of recoil beyond where your bullets are hitting, and this is often cited as one of the most skill-based aspects of CSGO. Whether or not you agree with that is something for a separate video. In addition to this, in addition to this predictable recoil, we also have extreme logarithmic spread increase for CSGO. For example, after the first, that is to say, after the first shot, you get a huge bump in spread, and after that, it's not quite as big of a bump, and it decreases the spread increase after each shot from there on out. Now, this is different than the system that existed in CS 1.6, which was exponential. So the spread increase after the first shot was not very much, and then it got bigger, and then it got bigger, and then it got really big. Uh, entirely different ways of handling a spread increase. So yes, in other words, I do, I do know about your recoil patterns oh that people keep telling me about, how, how, the, how the system is so much more skillful. But this, the, all this is in addition to the huge base spread in, in a lot of cases, and the even, even greater spread increase in CSGO. Oh, and beyond that, spread decrease in CSGO is really slow, like a whole lot slower than Battlefield 1. You really have to choose between single taps or just full out sprays. Uh, bursting is not particularly useful. Three round burst with a big pause is okay, but the most optimum way of shooting is almost always shooting one taps for the head. If you try to micro burst like you could in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, it'll just give you the same result as just holding down the trigger. There's no, there's no benefit whatsoever from doing it. So at this point, if you have previously believed that spread is antithetical to a competitive game, you have two choices here. You can either admit that spread is not, in fact, antithetical to the creation of a competitive game and environment, or you have to somehow convince me that CSGO and CS 1.6 were somehow not legitimate competitive games. Or I guess if you're that kind of person, you could accept doublethink and believe both simultaneously. Personally, I think that spread is not, in fact, antithetical to a competitive game, but that's a topic that I want to explain a whole lot more in a later video. Hope you found this useful.